All right. Mic's on. Stream is live. Music's down, so I can actually talk over it. How's it going, folks? My name is Patrick, also known as Socrates, and welcome to Fold It. So, uh, this has been a long time coming. Uh, I have been super, super busy for the past week because I've had a test. I did not intend to wake up this early for any reason whatsoever, but um, I'm reading the Discord. Everyone's asking for a stream, so I figured, you know what? I might as well oblige and, uh, and see whether or not my new internet is actually working. So anyways, yeah, this is what my folded screen looks like. I use dark mode because dark mode is, is life. Uh, and yeah, I have access to the full suite of options here as, as, a, as a veteran here. I go to general options and, uh, and I turn on show advanced UI. Hello, Uncle Bill. How you doing? How's TKF doing? It's been a while, I know. Um, but yeah, Folded is blowing up right now and people are in dire need of a streamer and I am more than willing and somewhat able to fill that. Um, anyways, dark mode. Uh, go into your uh, menu, obviously, and then go to advanced GUI, make sure that's ticked. And then you go to your view settings and then you're gonna look for dark background. There you go. Uh, you can also disable the outlines. There's a whole bunch of view options here. I'm gonna get into those eventually because my view options are going to be completely nuked because I'm going to go over the tutorial puzzles real quick and do a kind of a pseudo speed run of that because uh, you don't need all of them, but there are some puzzles that are worth playing. Um, and plus, like, I'm, I just want to show that these puzzles are actually doable. And I think not all of the YouTube uh, tutorials are necessarily... Um, whatchamacallit, up to date. So this one's, you know, probably easy. You can probably figure it out. The main reason that the score is like, you know, all screwed up is because of that clash. So clashing is going to nuke your score like hard. So let's see. They didn't show the thing at the side? Hmm, that's weird. Um, again, it's going to be in your view menu, which is at the bottom. Um, this one, I think you are supposed to drag the backbone here. Yeah, there you go. I'm just doing this from memory. Um, <clears throat> By the way, if you don't know like why we're here, go check out full.it. There is a coronavirus puzzle. I'm sure you do probably already know what's going on over there. This one has two clashes, so uh, you can just drag them apart. I think I do have a command to fold it. There you are. All right. Moving right along here. I think the first puzzle that people start to get like stuck at is uh, uh, control over clashing. This one, I just hit S on my keyboard uh, to use the shake tool. That's something that I will be using frequently. Uh, add the link to the title. Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Done. I don't know if I have title enabled, but I, I, I'm, I'm pretty on top of that. Let's see here. This one is talking about voids, and so you should be closing the gap for this. Um, no, I don't hide these tips. This one you can probably achieve a high score just by like, you know, using the pull tool. Normally we don't actually do this in gameplay, but this is just a shoot, like, prove an example here. Um, so... We'll just hit next here because Wiggle is going to unlock at the next tutorial and Wiggle does a lot of things. Now, let me let me like pause here and explain how Wiggle works in like sort of a layman's terms because even I don't know fully how it works. But basically, Wiggle is going to do a lot of math based on how your protein is currently shaped. And it's going to say, OK, which directions can we move this entire thing? Right. And it's going to say, okay, out of those directions, which one results in more points? And then after those cr numbers have been crunched, those, uh, it, like, Wiggle will start to move the protein in that point, in that direction and get more points. Um, and then it'll repeat uh, itself ad nauseum again and again until you turn Wiggle off. So a hotkey for that is W on your keyboard. Uh, I'm just going to hit W because that's what I'm used to. And as you can see, the point is going to start rising rapidly and it should easily reach the point threshold. Wiggle is your best friend. Um, this is this is more like the coronavirus percent speed run because like I'm only doing the relevant tutorials for the coronavirus, uh, hopefully here. So anyways, it's going to keep going. And as you can see, this, this number up in the 
upper left corner here it's 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 ticking up right that's the amount of like passes that it's doing with like you know all the math and whatnot and so you can either hit stop uh down here you can hit w on your keyboard you, or you could hit escape and it will stop wiggling and uh finalize that wiggle action uh, next up is sheets together this one uh has given some players some trouble here so your starting camera is going to start you over here don't worry about the clashes like these are just kind of here. Um, let's see. Ooh, home doesn't actually reset the camera to uh, whatever that the starting was. Okay, interesting. Uh, by the way, camera controls. Left clicking and dragging will rotate uh, this, uh, the the protein kind of along its uh, central rotation point. But left clicking and dragging on the sides of the screen will rotate along the plane of uh, the of the screen. Uh, and then to pan the camera, you hold right click and um, move across the uh, the background here. Um, and then zooming in and out, you can either use the scroll wheel or you can hold down the scroll wheel button and move your mouse. Um, so you'll be you'll see you'll be seeing me do that a lot um, as well. So with these ones, you just want to drag these sheets together to create um, the hydrogen bonds here. So you kind of want to like drag them together, kind of like that. This one's a little bit finicky as far as like how well you should be dragging it. Uh, the nice thing about when you're dragging it with the pull tool is that it will sort of simulate wiggle while you're pulling. Uh, and so that'll help a little bit here. It says make four more hydrogen bonds. That's your bonus objectives for extra points. You do have access to wiggle on this puzzle. So if you just drag it together, hit wiggle, it should properly align itself. There's no more clashes. This one, this segment's scoring pretty badly here, but we have all four. Uh, five, in fact, hydrogen bonds, and we have our bonus points to put us o put us over the threshold for this puzzle. So, yeah, again, the tutorial puzzles. They're a little obtuse. Sometimes they're not very well designed, but they're working on it, and they're doable. Uh, and you can still learn um, how to properly manage this. So, next up, hide the hydrophobic. So, this is the protein backbone, and the way the proteins are constructed, they have side chains jutting out of each little segment on the protein. Now, the blue ones are hydrophilic. That means they're gonna be sticking towards the outside. There's a lot of science and physics that go into this, but um, the, long and, the long, long and short of it is that uh, water uh, tends to drive this a lot. W water is important because, uh, because of what these uh, side chains uh, have and how polar water is as a molecule. Um, tracked and repelled, yeah, I'd go with that, with that uh, uh, explanation too, but yeah, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, um, phobic will repel water, philic will attract water. Uh, again, more science involved into that. I'd be more than happy to explain it. Um, but uh, all we need to do for this puzzle is is just drag the uh, hydrophilic residue out of its clashing position and then bury our hydrophobic residue inside of our protein. Orange residues are going to make your core of any uh, of almost any design fold that you do, and this is relevant for your Corona puzzle uh, solution as well. Make sure that you have orange residues in the in the core portions of your protein, wherever it might be. So if you're like stacking helix helices together, right in between there, you're, you're gonna want some uh, hydrophobic residues so that um, <clears throat> the the sort of quote unquote rules of folding will be obeyed here. So uh, let's see. I don't remember what we're doing in here. So. Uh, repeat guide. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so we're matching up sheets here. So this is going to tell you to do use rubber bands. You can always undo. Uh, and I do apologize because my bird, my uh, my African gray parrot, uh, the family pet, is making some noise here. But we shall ignore her for now. So um, here's the here's the lowdown about rubber bands. You you hold shift, you drag, and then you drag from one residue to an empty point in space or to another residue, um, and then you can attach your sheets like this and then you can hit wiggle and it will pull them together. Um, one thing to note about rubber bands is that they do not care about orientation, they just care about distance, right? And so they will pull things together until that they are the appropriate distance apart, but um, the reason why we tend to use multiple rubber bands is because uh, we care about orientation and distance. Like for example, if this were pulled together but these two hydrogen bond uh, bond points weren't uh, aligned or oriented properly, then we'd have a problem, right? So um, 
past the tutorials, I you might see me uh, going into a different view using the advanced uh, GUI setting, and then actually manually um, making rubber bands in between these attachment points here. It's not possible to do in cartoon view, but you can do it in stick stick view um, if you have access to the advanced GUI. So. Anyways, that one's pretty intuitive, but again, fold it can be a little bit uh, of a bugbear with regards to that. Next up, control over clashing. People seem to get stuck on this one all the time, so I'm going to try and do a 30 second clip of this. So control over clashing, uh, it's going to say, there's a lot of clashes here. Wiggle will make this thing blow up as, as if you threw spaghetti against the wall. So um, we use clashing importance to, um, to manipulate this. Um, and it's gonna give you the explanation and whatnot. So if we just wiggle from full power again, look at it It's blowing up. We don't want that. So we're gonna undo that, right? We're gonna reset and we're gonna make our clash components all the way down to 0 0.01 You can type in the in in the in the field down here or you can use the slider and just like use that so when we turn the clashing importance down we're telling the game Okay, hey, don't focus on mo so much on clash clashes use the other score formulas um, as much as possible in your score calculations so that you don't make such drastic moves when you're wiggling or shaking, right? So now, since we have clashing points low, the, the protein isn't afraid to kind of snuggle up and make more clashes while it tries to right itself, yeah? And then we can stop wiggle, or you can change the clashing importance on the fly. I like to stop wiggling just so I have an undo point. Um, and so we can go up to maybe like 30% clashing points. This is percentage based, by the way. Um, and then keep going upwards. And then just gradually ease it in. Now, what the tutorial might not tell you, right, um, is that we tend to do this a lot, right? So I'm going to stop uh, wiggle after the score stabilizes at, uh, oh, wow, four sevens. How about that? Um, the tutorial lets you keep playing, first off, so we're going to bring the clash importance back down to 0 0.05. Now remember that high score. I'm going to wait for the score to stabilize. That's about right. Uh, and then we'll, we'll probably just do the same thing. I'll go uh, to... let's go to 50, 50%. And then full power. Now, you would expect that when we did like the same sort of technique, we would end up with the same sort of score, but it's slightly different. And this can go up or down uh, in Fold It. And so, definitely when you're trying to use clashing importance to your advantage, uh, you know, make use of. Uh, manipulating clashing importance and kind of jostling the protein a little bit to see if wiggle maybe missed a path that it could have taken uh when it tried to optimize score uh since this is also like in the still positives as far as score is concerned i'm not afraid with just cranking the clashing importance back up to full because i know the protein won't fly away like spaghetti um smashing against the wall and look at that we just made a new high score for ourselves so we're up to 7800 points so uh, yeah, control over clashing. Not as not as intimidating as as one might think. All right. And feel free to clip this, by the way, and like and 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 save it if you guys want to show like me um, doing these puzzles for you guys. Uh, so next up is sheets and ladders. Uh, this one uh, is just saying, hey, make rubber bands and and do a lot of things here. Um, we're also doing camera controls, and we can also uh, remove all bands at once. So let's say I make a whole bunch of bands, I'm not really happy with them. R on the keyboard will remove all of the rubber bands, or you can use the button down here if you're a visual learner. Uh, so let's see here. By the way, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in chat. Um, I am more than happy to at least attempt to answer them. Close my door real quick, by the way. <clears throat> By the way, I'm assuming that no, since nobody has really said anything, my uh, my uh, my settings seem to be correct, right? I'm not, I'm not, I don't seem to be dropping frames. Uh, I I'm streaming with a much higher bit rate than uh, what I'm normally used to, uh, because my internet got recently upgraded. Uh, Q will reset the camera, so if you're not hovering over anything. 
like with your mouse, it'll center the protein um, and then set it as its central axis of rotation, pivot point, whatever. Um, but uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's that's a that's a quick ban. <laughs> yeah, no. We don't we don't subscribe to that. Um, but um, what was I saying? If you have a, a certain amino acid, um, let's see. If we have a certain amino acid highlighted, you hit Q. That'll set that particular amino acid as the um, axis of rotation. So, as you can see, it's it's now focused. So I'm gonna reset the view to neutral here uh, using using the Q key, uh, and then I will just rubber band my sheets together. Um, a good practice if I'm just using these standard rubber bands is that I will rubber band them in between like these two pairs of uh, of uh, bondable atoms. So like you can kind of see that this one's a little bit longer and then we have uh, you know the uh, blue and red nodes over here. Those are actually nitrogens and oxygens being tagged. And so I'll ban I'll use rubber bands between those uh, when I'm making uh, rubber bands. And then I'll hit wiggle and usually that will um, usually that will uh, settle things together quite nicely actually. I'm gonna cut this rubber band here. You can cleave them just by uh, clicking on them uh, and then I'll hit remove all rubber bands just to let it have a little bit more degrees of freedom and then shake and wiggle to finish off. We didn't even need to shake actually we already had enough bonus points from the objectives and uh, and wiggling to put us over the threshold here. We have enough hydrogen bonds in play. So again um, I don't think I did that perfectly per se like I maybe could, could have shifted this over here but you know the thing about fold it tutorials is that since there are so many different ways that like it could unfold pun intended um, there are different there's a lot of different scores and so the th score thresholds aren't absolute there are different ways to reach them if you know what you're doing or not you can you can totally reach them accidentally and that's happened to me before next up lock and lower uh, this one also gives players some trouble as far as I've seen in the discord um, so this um, we're messing with more sheets, uh, and it's going to show us about the freeze technique. Um, so freezing, what freezing does specifically is that it locks bond angles in place. So notice that I say it locks bond angles, but not position. Um, when you freeze something and you globally wiggle it, it will lock its orientation and bond angles in place, but it will not freeze its position in space. If you want to freeze its position in space, you, you freeze it and then you use bands to say, you know, um, we don't have access to bands in this puzzle, but you use bands to drag it out to a point in space or just like drag it out very slightly to kind of keep it in place. Um, and then that'll um, do the trick. So in this puzzle, the recommended solution is to freeze that and then drag this downward. Um, and then you should have access to wiggle to clean up your mistakes. So. Um, you just hit wiggle and notice how the frozen segment isn't, um, you know, is, isn't, uh, it locked in place, right? Like it's still wiggling when we hit global wiggle, but it doesn't move when we're using pull, right? When we're, when we're just pulling on our, um, our protein here. So, um, freezing is good for, for pulling. You can also press F to freeze the entire protein or unfreeze the entire protein. Uh, so there's that as well, but yeah. Uh, it's always a good idea, uh, by the way, once you're done uh, working with freeze, to unfreeze everything and wiggle, just to allow that extra degrees of freedom that wiggle needs to really explore the possibility space around. Um, let me see here. What is that Twitter notification? Ah, yeah, that's okay. Hold it, just mentioned me. Alright, so let's see. What do we have next? Turn it down, flipping sheets, and then let's see. Blueprint and condition. Okay, cool. I think turn it down is still relevant. Freezing can still be relevant in, in the design phase. Um, ah, okay. I think I know what this puzzle does. Um, this is a, a tool that isn't really often that used, uh, tweaking. And you can use it to rotate helices or uh, mess around with sheets. Um, I personally don't use this tool as much. 
but it does help in some regards. Hold on, let's shake first. Some like some people like to shake first, some people like to wiggle first. Uh, I say it's up to you. Yeah, quick shake, quick shake and wiggle will put this uh, puzzle through. And yeah, and then um, let's see, tweaking can also be used for sheets here. So I think what the game wants you to do here is just shift the sheet over by uh, one segment here. Um, if you wiggle right away, it's probably going to blow up, so you probably want to resolve clashes using Shake first. Shake only does side chains, so that's always handy if you do have uh, some clashing going on. Which direction should you rotate? Um, there's no straight answer for that. Just uh, just rotate such that the, uh, the hydrophobics are buried. Um, oh wait, no, you're, you're talking about a different puzzle, aren't are you? Let me just check here. Right rotation. Where is that? Aha! That's, that's coming up next, but I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and op open it up. So, right rotation. This one's the... Okay. Um, you want to look at this from a qualitative standpoint. So, notice how I'm kind of like staring down these helices. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to check for obvious orange and, and blue sides of a helix. That's how helices are typically designed, unless they're like buried in the center, in which case they will um, do, they will have like mostly orange residues. Uh, order of shake and wiggle cause any difference, difference in outcome? Absolutely yes. Because um, again, shake and wiggle go off of your current protein pose, right? So it'll do the math based on where everything is positioned right now. So if I shake first, right, and then wiggle, you know, 8829, if I wiggled, then shake, 8434, four, right? So it really depends. Like global wiggling, um, you know, places more emphasis on moving the backbone rather than your side chains. Shaking uh, places more emphasis on, you know, moving your side chains and uh, using the different rotomers available uh, that are optimal here. So, usually I like opening with a shake just to uh, just to like, kind of feel things out here. Uh, and I'm looking at this here. This one's kind of ambiguous. There are some orange residues over here that are exposed uh, and tagged orange. This one looks good. There are all there's a bunch of blue stubs down over here. Uh, uh, but this one needs some work here. So I'm seeing that there's blue here on the inside and orange on the outside. We want that to be the opposite way. So it doesn't again, it doesn't matter which route like which direction you rotate in. I just just use what's available. Um, but you want those orange residues buried inside your core. And so that way your yellow exposed tags will, will go away. Obviously we have a lot of clashing now, so we're gonna use the shake tool first. That should put us into the positives, but there's still a lot of clashing here. And when there's a lot of clashing like this, I feel like the game's gonna blow up my protein. So let's go into the behavior tab, lower down the clashing importance so that it calms down, and then we'll hit wiggle. And now you can see the protein starting to collapse, but now we have like more reasonable clashes, right? And then we can do this while we're wiggling too. We can use the arrows to bump it up by 5% at a time. And then we'll just go up to full power. We might try rotating this guy a little bit too. Now that, I, now that I'm looking at things, but uh, let's try a shake uh, wiggle combo first. I do notice that they give you access to wiggle power here, uh, and then we can get a few extra points using wiggle power. But I do want to try this without using it. Um, let's see. So maybe this guy needs to be turned around. Gonna expose our phenylalanine over here. To, no, that's not a little bit. That's a little bit annoying. This guy's still fine. It's just this guy that's problematic. It's gonna move around here. Ah, okay, that settled quite nicely here. So we now have mostly buried hydrophobics here. We can crank that up. Give it a little shake, sometimes that helps. Oh. Shaking also exposes the positions of all of the, um, the side chains too, so you can see how much space is actually being filled here. 
visually this looks good. I'm gonna crank it down to like 0 0.01 and let this really, really collapse. And then bring this back up here. I'm not feeling the EDM right now. Let's uh, crank that along here. Now the order of which like I've done this like results in different sort of uh, outcomes here. So um, we, we're certainly free to reset if possible. I'm gonna keep going with this fold and see if I can make it work. I'm gonna use a rubber band to kind of pull things together. Um, again, you lowering the clashing importance down helps the protein kind of settle in. And just jostling the protein in general will allow for new possibility spaces to be explored. We'll remove the rubber band. Hit shake again. Now this sort of stuff, by the way, is, is normally what hand folding uh, will, will uh, be automated with recipes, but uh, we're not usually messing around with that in the tutorials right now. Uh, you might have noticed that I hit restore credit best. That's I on the keyboard. Uh, that'll restore like your high score that you are actually getting credit for on that puzzle. Um, just because I was just kind of un un unhappy with how uh, the other thing was working out here. So let me see if I can rotate the other direction here and get a slightly different outcome. I'm going to rotate until I s no longer see the yellow orbs. Then I'm going to hit shake. We'll shake at full clashing importance. And again, bring this down. Let the protein settle in. And then slowly bring it up. Generally, you can bump up your clashing importance whenever like your score stabilizes, quote unquote. And I think I, I think this time we're we're gonna get our results. Just might need a little shake. There you are. Doable, 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 doable. We still have a lot of voids, and we can certainly try to solve that with more instances of uh, clashing importance manipulation. But again, um, undo and reset are your friend if you find that you're deep down into the rabbit hole and you can't really but like bust through that try some of your earlier steps maybe go back to your re, uh, your your best uh, in the undo menu restore credit best and uh, and explore those possibility spaces because that's really what folded is all about is exploring possibility spaces and seeing what works and what doesn't work um, can't get it uh, I mean, you saw me get it just now, and it took me a little bit too, even as a veteran I was struggling, so, um, you know, it really depends. It really depends. Um, if you really want to crank it through, I think enabling high wiggle power will get you a, a few extra points here. Um, yeah, that, that got me like an extra 300, just by wiggling on high. High forces a lot more ideality ca calculations in your fold, so what that means is that it'll look at your protein and say, okay. Um, ideally the bond angles should be this, and so we're going to force those as we move it. Uh, let's see, going back to the puzzle menu. Hydrophobic Disaster might have uh, thrown some people off too. Um, so let's see here. Hydrophobic Disaster is intended for you to sort of use this as like a, a boss level, of quote unquote. So we're going to use freeze to lock that in place, and then we're going to drag this over here. Normally this isn't a technique that I normally use, uh, but we don't have access to cut, and we don't have access to move, and so that's out of the question. Um, we are clashing a lot here, so we don't have access to clashing importance. I'm going to have to throw some feedback because, uh, you know, clashing. I'm assuming that we're at full clashing points anyway, so it probably doesn't matter. I'm gonna use rubber bands to hold those in place and hopefully make it so that it's not gonna fly apart. Um, that's something that we can you can use if you don't have access to clashing importance manipulation. Uh, wiggle a little bit, freeze, remove rubber bands, shake. Wait till shake stabilizes. You can see the amount of passes that shake is making, just like wiggle up there. Good job, plant. Uh, and then after the shake, I'll just do a wiggle. Looks like, yeah, wiggle took a little bit to do its first pass here, but yeah, there we are. 7,400 points and hydrophobic disaster is no longer as such. Um, let's see here. So we don't need 
uh, you're, you're not going to need these tools and types puzzles. Um, so if you can skip them, then by all means, I don't know if you can. Um, but let's see here. Structure and idealize. You probably want uh, at least this one here. So this one, we uh, just learn about the structure tool, our structure mode. So um, we just want to helicize this entire thing. So we use two on our keyboard or we use the structure mode uh, down here. Um, full mode and ideal access. Okay, so you go ahead and drag out the helix segment to uh, tag it all as helix, or you can right click and say, I want this to be a sheet, or I want this to be a loop, or I want this to be a helix, and then you can drag it out from there. And then once that's done, you go back to uh, pull mode uh, by using one on your keyboard or just clicking the, uh, the modes tab and clicking through there. And then you right click on any part of the helix and then you release on ideal ss so you can right click and then click again or you can if you're like me i i right click and hold and then release when would you need this uh in the design phase so when you're uh hold on let's see so main menu cancel let's load let's load the coronavirus puzzle real quick and, and i'll show you what i mean um, assuming that the game doesn't crash. It is very prone to doing that. Okay, so here we are. So we're in the coronavirus puzzle. Um, we're, we start off with a straight chain, just like straight up, right? So you just uh, use structure mode, reassign it as helix, and then you can make your own proteins. Simple as that, right? You're stuck at 14.8k at Corona. Um, try, try use, try looking for uh, like different places that your protein might have um, problems with. Do you see like a void or a gap? You can turn on voids to see uh, if there's gaps. Uh, maybe there's, uh, maybe there's like some hydrogen bonds that you could be making with the the polar uh, atoms. So there's that too. Um, definitely oh, turn on advanced GUI and uh, use your view menu and all the options available here to like, you know, show bondable atoms, show uh, all the bonds here, and, and look for those opportunities. Uh, I recommend using a color scheme with CPK, uh, just so you can see which um, atoms are polar and which ones should line up. If that helps, uh, Gut. Gut Lawnmacher? I, I don't know how to pronounce that name. I, I'm sorry. I apologize if I butchered it, but uh, I will... Uh, advise that also use recipes um you can't go wrong with the tvdl recipes recipes are kind of set it and forget it kind of thing and they'll instead of using visual inspection like we do it'll use a lot more math to figure out what's the worst scoring parts of your protein and how can we explore different possibilities for that there's also some bonus objectives here so definitely check if you to see if you are um if you're meeting all of these bonus objectives um there are more uh there's more commentary on what these actually are on the puzzle page, which you can reach by clicking right here in the game. Uh, recipes can be found on the website, so you like open the folded website, go to recipes, and while you have your game open, you can download it straight into your game. Um, so yeah, recipes are, are kind of like the current metagame as far as uh, as far as I'm concerned is you get a good fold and then you let your recipes do do the workhorse and assuming that you have a good fold then your recipes will find like the most mathematically optimal position for it um, <clears throat> over time of course they might get something wrong which is why you have to stare at your protein and seeing if there's something visually going on that's not correct um, so there's that let's see so we did that we don't need these uh, I I think we do need this puzzle here. Cut and paste is, uh, yeah, okay, cut points. So you can use multiple uh, way things to um, w ways to seal cut points here. So you can either wiggle, and when you have, uh, uh, see, the thing is, the clashing importance tab is down here normally, and normally I would show that if you have enable cut bands turned on, which is it's on by default. It will treat all cut points as if they have a rubber band in between them, and when you wiggle, they will pull together no matter what. So if I like pull this apart again, it's going to pull back together. If you disable it, it's going to disable that entirely, and then it's up to you to actually set a rubber band and uh, enable that, or, or and pull it together, so to speak. So 
Um, this move tool here, you just left click on any part of the protein and then you get the move arrows. Left click and dragging will rotate on that axis. Left click and dragging th this will rotate up in the plane of the screen. And then right clicking and dragging will pan it across. Uh, you definitely want to move the camera around and see whether or not things are aligned. Um, and then that's another way that you can seal cut points, although it won't be as um, as positioned optimized as if you used wiggle. So whether you use wiggle before or after you seal your cut points, make sure you use it. Also, I should probably make you uh, a VIP here. That way you're easier to see. Alright, sequences we're not concerned about. Um, conditions, we've already kind of seen like what was going on with conditions here. Like, uh, those are the side objectives that we've been seeing. Um, let's see. Disulfide bonds is good for other puzzles, not necessarily for coronavirus, but whenever there are two cysteines involved, um, we want to make disulfide bonds, uh, typically, um, typically speaking, but they have a special bond color. They're, they're denoted in green here. Just drag those along and force those, uh, disulfides to form. That one's a quick one. Uh, blueprint. Blueprint is very useful for your design puzzles. It's also 722, so I should be getting to, uh, getting going soon. Um, anyways, blueprint. Right now they're in Abigo coloring, so you can see uh, what's where. just have access to our building blocks here so we have helix to helix uh, connections helix to sheet sheet to helix and sheet to sheet connections so this one I think is in need of a helix to helix uh, connector let's see there you are looks like it also shows you like a little ghost of uh, where it's going to uh, end up is that new I don't, I don't I don't remember that being a thing if it's now a thing that's great View settings and tutorial might get overwhelming for some, but um, I understand why it's disabled, but it is a thing. Uh, let's see here. More building blocks, blueprint and conditions. So let's take a look at more building blocks real quick. Let's see. Building block on... Aha! Torsional constraints. Okay, so this is also important for using uh, blueprint in your design puzzles uh, and, in corona in the, and in the coronavirus puzzle. Excuse me. Um... So the constraints do behave like rubber bands. Wiggling will pretty much get us nowhere here since they're like, you know, they're constraining the protein. But late game, we want to like really allow those degrees of freedom. So we just take these building blocks, drag them out, and then when, and then that should free up the, um, the hinge points. So again, those... They, they behave like rubber bands. They also low-key behave like freezing in, in the sense that they try their best to preserve the bond angles um, of those building blocks. And that should get you um, this puzzle down the drain. All right, uh, last but not least, the design puzzles. Um, you're gonna want to know about these uh, as far as the coronavirus puzzle is concerned. So we have access to the design mode now. You can use four on your keyboard. Uh, the number four key, uh, and then we just want to mutate this to something that actually fits, like, oh, I don't know, leucine maybe? Yeah, maybe something bigger. Phenylalanine, maybe too big. Isoleucine, maybe too big. Uh, let's see here. Oh, thank you. Um, we just want to clear the clashes, really. So, mutate to leucine, isoleucine, because they're still relatively buried. Some type ch side chains are too small, so now we want to make it bigger to fill up the void. So uh, we'll employ our ringed friends here. And I think, uh, let's see, we have access to shake. 
Is there any other mutable residues here? We probably want to use something even bigger. Maybe Tryptophan. Yeah, Tryptophan's big enough. And then Mass Mutate is basically Shake and Wiggle, but for picking uh, side chains instead. So I'm just gonna hit. I'm just gonna hit M. We, we can we can do it in design mode. I'm, I don't wanna, <laughs> but we will. Okay, our tutorial forces us to do like at least three, and then we can we can hit mutate. Mutate is the M key on your keyboard. It works a whole lot like shake, in the sense that the passes will be slower than wiggle, uh, and you might not immediately see changes. But as you can see now, it's automatically picking uh, the most score optimized residue for each of the positions that you can actually mutate, uh, and so we sh we should reach the score threshold easily. That's good design. That's good design. I, I say keep keep the. Uh... Keep the mutate puzzle like this if you're asking for feedback. I just know that I'm a veteran, so I'm just like, ah, I don't want to like manually mutate all these residues. All right, insertion and deletion. Uh, this one's teaching two things. So we have constraints in the sense that this needs to be closer. Um, so we learn about insertion and deletion here. So we can change the length of the helix and then we can say insert uh, one, two, or three between. Um, we'll insert one, we'll wiggle, that should be long enough, and then uh, we'll mutate as well. Uh, mutate does insert new residues in their shake optimized position, so that's worth noting. Uh, we're going to wait until mutate finishes a pass here and then we'll uh, do another wiggle. So it did right there, the, the, the little counter ticked up to two. Uh, let's see. Why is this? Oh, it's a Tyrus. That's why. Maybe give it some help. There we go. Like I said, even if you don't have access to your clashing importance, a little protein jostling might explore new possibility spaces and lead to a higher score in wiggling. And I think that's going to do it for um, most of the tutorial puzzles that you'd need to know as far as um, coronavirus is concerned. I'm going to open up the coronavirus beginner puzzle because I'm short on time here, but uh, let me show you like the sort of basic uh, thing that or like sort of a basic process that I might go through here. So in the beginner puzzle, we're already starting with a pre uh, a predefined structure here. Um, now, normally I'd be making this out of, uh, let's say, the straight chain and um, and and using cut and move to to really like dig down and, and view uh, things here. Let me restore my uh, view settings though. I'm gonna use dark background. I'm gonna use score hydro CPK uh, just so I can see the polar atoms. I'm gonna turn on my bonds. Turn on show bondable atoms. I like to tend to hide voids and show classes and exposed. And I'll also look at backbone issues too. This will tell me if something's really wrong. Um, let's see, auto mod is hiccuping there. We'll keep it on cartoon for now, but there are other uh, reasons why we might want to say you go to stick view and see each and every single molecule and hydrogen bond available here. We're going to use uh, show all side chains. I'm going to say show bondable hydrogens, please. Um, I do not like the fading GUI. I like to keep it on all the time, and I'd like um, outlines turned off. So, uh, in an early design phase, I will probably actually go to a hydro color scheme. Uh, I think I might turn off the helix uh, bonds here, just because I know that they're there. Uh, and then I'm, I usually use the cut tool to sort of, when I'm making my shapes, uh, I will use the cut tool to sort of move things around and deconstruct it and, and position them properly. And then let's say I wanted to put these things back together. So, you know, let's say that they're they're quote unquote in position. I am in explaining mode because there's a lot of people who need help. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you, you heard about this, Koofer, but uh, r slash coronavirus posted about uh, the Foldit puzzle. And so our Discord has been in crisis mode. <laughs> let's see here. This... Uh, needs a little bit of rotation, so I will 
use the move tool for that. I tend to use the move tool more than I do use the uh, the tweak tool, if you haven't noticed. Obviously, there's, there's a lot of clashes here, but we can fix that through wiggling and whatnot. Get a little closer there. There we go. Then hit wiggle. Freeze, unfreeze. I'm going to lock these backbone orientations uh, and rubber band them together for good measure. I'm going to say I'm going to disable cut bands as well because I don't want this to be pulling on each other here. And that should help uh, fix these issues over here. Do the same thing, unfreeze. And voila. We can also hit mutate here and, and uh, auto pick our residues. And that's how I'd go, I would go about the early game if I was starting from scratch. Obviously we start off with a binder here and it's already in a very like relatively good position here. I can see some optimizations that could be made though. So like for example, I could drag this here and try to make a hydrogen bond using this um, tyrosine here. Uh, stuff like that, visual inspection will help. But if you wanna just go straight for the numbers, um, First off, I'd, I'd go with a mutate pass here. I, I tend to shake and mutate more uh, before I wiggle, and that helps uh, pick the best side chains, like the absolute best for what we have. And I'm just going to wait for this to tick upwards to, um, to make sure that it's done a pass for the entire protein. That should get us a lot of points very quickly. Unfortunately, unfortunately it's going to take a little bit, though. I'm going to re-enable cut bands before I forget. Let's stop that for now. I'm going to go straight to wig uh, medium wiggle power, because why not? Looks like we are making some hydrogen bonds with the spike protein. Based on the starting structure that they've given us, I think we do want to go for like this little crevasse here. Um, and and sort of shape our protein to do that. I think what I might end up doing in my actual solutions in the future um, is maybe going for a beta sheet network um, in here. Like the beta sheets actually tend to curve a little bit, so I think that'll work well. And yeah, I will absolutely stream doing it. I don't really play this game off stream as much as I do, unless it's like recipe grinding. Um, so we'll go for that. Um, wiggle there but yeah just it, it's 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 a very long process an iterative process um by the way in hydro view this is a great way for seeing whether or not your helices are properly aligned um and yet, as you can see we've got this nice orange core going down the center and those orange residues are not tagged with our orbs here so we can safely say that they're uh doing their job properly and then when you want to go back and see whether there, whether or not there's problem points, you go back to a score uh, hydro view, and that'll make sure that all of the side chains are color coded based on their hydrophilicity or phobicity, and you can see the polar atoms. Can I share my cookbook? Not directly, but um, I mean, there's th this is the screen. Like, take your screenshots now or something, or save save the vods because these are the recipes that I typically use. A brief overview, quick fix is when I'm using it to uh, fi quickly fix a mistake or if I'm like hastily putting things together and the backbones aren't exactly optimized, quick fix conservatively um, conservatively fixes backbone ideality errors and uh, does a lot of local wiggling and a lot of local rebuilding and remixing to do that. Um, and so it's very good for recovering from a low score if we're trying to move things around and discover things. Uh, so that's quick fix. Let me cancel the recipe here. Come on. Come on, game. You can do it. I believe. All right, there we go. Um, let's see. Bridge wiggle is only useful in uh, disulfide uh, bridge puzzles, uh, so I won't go over this stream. Zero link bands is if I want to anchor stuff in place. This is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, there's a recipe to automate the whole process. So you could either just like shift and drag like each little one and this takes forever um or 
you can use zero length bands and you can configure it to only band your sheets, helices, loops. Uh, you can have it band the backbone or the side chains and it'll do it. Um, it might take a little bit and your game's gonna chug while it's doing it. But it'll do it. And then, looks like I had it um, band sheets, but as you can see, all the sheets are anchored in position. Um, which is a shame because uh, I don't actually need those anchored, but whatever. Reset. Um, and then these, those are like the hand folding recipes. This is what I use when I'm actively playing the game. Uh, when I set it and forget it, these are my infinity recipes on the left here. So uh, we have uh, the TVDL series of recipes. TVDL is the initials of a very famous fold it recipe maker. Uh, Timo van der Laan, I believe his name is. If I don't pronounce it right, uh, please do not blame me. Um, and he features Deep Remix, Deep Rebuild as well. Both of these recipes kind of take the worst scoring parts of the protein, run the remix tools and rebuild tools on it, and see what sticks, and then it'll attempt a fuse operation to sort of smooth things out and see what the score really is. Void Crushers will target voids and put use rubber bands to kind of well, crush them. Um, GAB is a random rubber banding recipe where it'll basically make a whole bunch of critters, quote unquote, and use those as seeds to randomly rubber band different residues together in the protein and jostle the protein that way and see if we can get better scores. Uh, random idealize is exactly what it says on the tin. It'll hit use the idealize function on your protein to force good bond angles and then, um, you know, it'll it'll you do a basic fuse operation after that. The rest I haven't used in a very long time, so I wouldn't re really recommend the rest of these. But these ones at the bottom, I've been using uh, bread and butter since I really got into the recipe meta game. So that's gonna do it. Whoopsies. Um, <laughs> that's gonna do it for me because uh, I need to get going. I've got school in about uh, an hour and a half. I have yet to eat breakfast, so I am gonna go ahead and do that. Um, let me just make sure that I've got my outro settings ready. So, ah! Hopefully that wasn't too loud because I thought I set the volume in VLC, but apparently not. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, this, uh, this, this sort of ending theme uh, that you hear is composed by Popsky. You can also check out the Knowledge Fellowship for more educational content on Twitch. Um, I do have a Twitter. I do have my own personal Discord. Go check out the Foldit Discord, by the way. Someone link that in chat for me, please. Uh, and then you can also check out Foldit on its website here. Go stop coronavirus. Go, go help design a, a binder that we can block the spike protein. Uh, we have a lot of channel assets here, too. Uh, my girlfriend, uh, Hikaboo, made those. And yeah, that's going to be it for me. Uh, my name has been Socrates, and this has been a little nice little full test stream and tutorial speed run. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully, I'll be able to stream very, very soon. Um, yeah, see you guys later.